My name is Samantha Bass. I'm owner of Samantha's Modeling. You are watching AccessTV.org. I'm Naisha McCauley and you're watching AccessTV.org. Good morning, and welcome back to Miss Cleo's Storytelling Corner. This morning I'm going to show you some books that, are feature, that I'm featuring in the bookstore this month before I tell you my story. Um, <coughs> Emmett Teal, the children's book that I'm featuring, that children learn about and Matilda, that's, I think that's important to know about him. Our hearts broke when that, when that happened. And so that is one of the books that I'm featuring. Um, African Saints. Put that down. <clears throat> it's another book. Sometimes we don't think of saints as African or people of color, but this is a wonderful book. And... Um, you can get that at the bookstore. It says, Saints, Martyrs, and Holy People from the Continent of Africa. And pioneers, uh, they're pioneer uh, women and men um, in this book. Um, and I love this book because it shows you the kind of woman, I'm going to tell you a story about a woman, that... Um, I knew when I was a kid. And they're still here, these pioneer women. And this is um, this is a child's this is a child's book by Robert H. Miller. I know I haven't told you all of those authors. And our program from the on the 20th and the 27th, uh, Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome by Joy McGrew. Uh, Larry and um, I've tried to get in contact she's dynamic I tried to get in contact with her and I looked up the prices for her to come here and well um, maybe we can get to do that uh, sometime later in the year so those are the books that that I am featuring this week I'll bring you some more please read about your history read about the people that made a difference in our lives and right now I'm going to tell you a story. Um, I probably have told you this maybe before, but have you known those black women or women of color who always look mean? I always stayed away from them when I was a kid. They always got this, this stern look on their face. And I used to wonder why. And then when you got to know them and they smiled, they had this like beautiful smile and beautiful heart. And I never understood why they look so mean and why they look so stern and why when they t talk to you about certain things they were they were just so stern with you well i'm gonna tell you this story and this story is a story about a slave girl and her mother basically and living on a plantation now she her mother was one of those mothers that um could do anything she could cook, she could clean, she could work in the field, she could do anything. But the one thing that she would not do is be beat. You know, 
Sometimes you can be in bondage, but you don't have to be a slave in your head. And, that, and to her, she was not a slave and she was not going to be beat. And she told her daughter, she said, oh no, I don't ever want you to be beat. And she had a temper and a half, but her heart was big and she loved her daughter very much. And she said, don't you ever allow anyone to beat you. Because she had a fear of that, of someone beating her and beating her children. And that was so dramatic to her that she would not allow anyone, not, there was no, you couldn't be master enough to put your hands on her. Her husband was kind of on the mild side. He didn't say too much, but he could do anything too. And she'd get mad at him because he was, he was kind of quiet. He wasn't boisterous like her. And so she would argue with him all the time and you could hear him all over, you could hear her all over the plantation. Well, one day she, she went up to the big house uh, to clean. <laughs> Master was away and mistress, well, I don't know what happened in that house that day, <laughs> but mistress, put her hand back and gave her a swat. Well, do you think that went over too good? Mm-mm. That woman started to fighting and she fought all over that house until Mrs. couldn't do nothing but run out the house. I mean, she, she had no help in that house. She went out the house. You think that stopped that woman? Mm-mm, she beat her in the street. She beat her and she kept on fighting till the men in the, came and took her off, that woman. Well, they said, hey, you can't do this. You can't beat no white woman. You can't put your hands on no white woman. What's wrong with you, nigga? Well, her master came and said, going home. And she went home. Yep, she did. She went home. And she kept doing her work and she kept getting ready. And her daughter didn't know what she was sort of getting ready for, but she was getting everything in place. Well, she had a little baby. She got her in place. She got everything. Just like they was going away or something. And then one day, a little girl was out looking and she saw those men coming and she ran back and she tried to warn her mama. She was looking all over for her mama, but her mama was coming around the house and going straight for those men. And they said to her, you know you gotta be beat. You know you can't get away with what you did. And she just kept on looking at them with that kind of stern look that you see sometimes. And they started coming at her. <laughs> they didn't get to her fast enough. She started coming at them and jumped all over them. And just as one of them was going to pick up their gun and shoot up, Master came and said, no, 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 no. Told her to go on back. He'd take care of this. You go back. They said, you better take care of it. You go back. I take care of this. Well, Master told us, you know, she had to go. She didn't say much. Hun, Daddy stopped talking at night. Daddy loved Mama so much. I, you know, I didn't even know that. Loved her so much. He said, I can't stay here without you. I got to go with you. So the next day, Daddy got the mule and the horse ready. Mama told me she was going away and she picked up the baby to take it with her. <laughs> and when they started off, my tears ran down my face. Oh, if I didn't never know was how evil slavery was, I knew it then, taking my mama and my daddy away from me. And as they started going, Matt said, you know you can't take that baby with you. Give it to Auntie here. 
Mama looked at him. Did you hear me? Give it to, give, give, give it to, give it to, give it to auntie. You know you can't take that baby, would you? Hmm. Well, let me tell you something. Mama picked up that baby, one leg in each hand, and she said, either this baby come with me or this baby ain't going nowhere. She surely ain't staying with you. Now what you want? Mama went off with her baby and daddy. And I didn't see him about, about a year. And my heart was breaking because they were gone. And I wondered what would happen to him, what would happen to me. But a year later, Mama came back, Daddy came back. And I, I tell you this story because of the look. You know the look that told us, that tells us so much. Our parents don't even have to talk. <laughs> they just give us a look. And a look is to protect us. Maybe overprotect us in these days. But at one time, one time in history, that was very important. That look protected us many, many times. So when your mama give you that look, and when your daddy give you that look, you know exactly what it means. It came from way back there in slavery time when they was trying to protect their children from that white man, from that slave owner, and talk to them in almost sign language. Now move away from me, or come up the field, or I'm looking at auntie, or I'm looking at him, and something's happening, and I give you the look. You know that. Sometimes when we're walking down the street, and someone passes us and something's happening and we give each other the look and we keep on walking. We just had a conversation. Or we give each other a look and we all start laughing. We the only ones laughing because we the only ones know what's happening without a word between us. That saved our life many a day during slavery time. So, I didn't name the people in the story because I want you to name them. Because you know, you name those people because that's your story and my story. Remember that. So, read a little, write a little, even dream a little. And I'll see you next week. Take care.